Welcome to Matishia, Moscow region, and today we're going to talk about Atlant. We're just outside of the dressing room. A few years ago, Atlant shocked the league, making it all the way to the Gagarin Cup final. How about we take a look inside? In 2011, Atlant has enjoyed the greatest success in the franchise's history. It seems it was only yesterday that the battle against Salavat Yulaev at this very ring for the cup. Their best wasn't good enough though and Salavat won the series. During that playoff round, Milos Arriga, head coach of Atlant at that time, fell on his knees before the team on the ice after every one series, showing his respect. There's only one player on Atlant's current roster left from the 2011 team. It's youngster Roman Rukavishnikov, who played just 50 seconds in the spring of 2011. But of course he's not the only one in the club who remembers that season. It is still very much alive in the memory of Atlant's management and fans. Atlant is a new franchise. It's not even 10 years old. The club was founded in 2005 when Himik Voskresiev moved to Mutishi. It wasn't until three years later that Himik was renamed to Atlant. The team didn't make the playoffs just once in the 2013-14 season. Atlant had an amazing finish of the regular season two years ago. Back then the team was coached by Olympic champion Sergei Svetlov. With him in charge, Atlant made the last few games count and made it to the playoffs from the eighth spot. It all came down to the last game. Atlant needed to get three points and they also needed Dynamo Minsk to lose their home game. We won that game and our emotions were flying high, says Svetlov. The puck dropped in Minsk one hour later. I remember the fans remained at the rink to watch the game on the big screen and to for Ufa. The entire team was watching the game in the dressing room. I don't remember feeling nervous though. To be honest, I don't think I was capable of having any emotions at all. And then Ufa scored that empty netter and I felt relieved. Relieved, happy and empty. All at the same time. Atlant players were understandably happy and they celebrated the news with style. On the plane they recorded their own version of Harlem Shake. However, the playoffs didn't go so well for Atlant. They got eliminated in the first round by SKA St. Petersburg, who won the series 4-1. In the following season, Atlant didn't get off to a great start either. Team management didn't like what they saw and made drastic changes. In September 2013, Sergei Svetlov was fired as Atlant's head coach. Olympic champion of 1988 would go on to sign with Admiral Vladivostok and once again he would make the players from the 8th spot. Svetlov's successor in Atlant is Alexei Kudashov, a well-known man in Russian hockey. It was his first job as a KHL head coach. Obviously, I was a little surprised when they offered me the job, says Kudashov. I mean, it's not very common to fire coaches just a few games into the season. I got a call from the club and they gave me no time to think about the offer. I had to start right away. When things don't go your way, team management looks for a change, says Alexei Petrov, Atlant's captain last season. In this particular case, they decided to fire the coach. It is what it is. And so began Alexei Kudashov's coaching career. He doesn't like to give the media juicy quotes, but at the beginning of the season he was very open. It felt like a confession of a young coach. Last season I wasn't ready for the job, he says. I was still a player and not a coach. Now I'm more of a coach than a player. I know what they like and I know what they don't like because I was a player once too. That helps me to build a better relationship with the team and optimize our practices. 
When I was an assistant coach, I didn't have as much authority as I do now. That's one of the biggest changes for me. Me and the boys who understand and respect each other. We're all in it together. We have the same goal and we want to achieve it. We're one big family, everybody is different. Some guys are older, some guys are younger, some have more experience, some less. Everybody has different mentality. You always have to be in touch with the team, you have to talk to the boys. If a player works hard, has the right attitude and gives me 100% at every drill, I don't have to be rough on him. But if I see that he can do better, I have to force him. When it comes to practices, we all take them very seriously, agrees Petrov. Everybody works hard. I think I'm very active on the bench, continues Kudashov. I wouldn't say that I'm rough, but I'm very demanding to my players. You may not notice it, but trust me, it gets pretty hot on our bench. A team must be self-regulated, you can't go without it. That's what the captain and other experienced guys are there for. The team must be united. My job as a coach is to direct that energy. If I have to make some changes to shake things up a bit, that's exactly what I'm gonna do. Sometimes I even have to get a little rough on my captain and experienced players. That's just the way hockey works. Let's talk about the coaching staff that Kudashov put together. They're all young coaches. Yevgeny Nemesnikov, for instance, works with defensemen. It ain't easy to find anybody to work with during the season. Very few guys are available on the market, explains Kudashov. I've known Nemesnikov for a long time. I know what kind of experience he gained from working with junior teams and Red Army. I gave him a call and he agreed right away, for which I'm very thankful. I think he's doing a great job. Our defensemen have a lot to learn from him. Funny story. Defenseman Rafael Batushin got a game misconduct for this hit in one of the regular season games. Ever since then, the entire league knows this cleaning lady. Yeah, I remember she was telling me she just washed the floor and I'm making it all dirty again, says Batushin. I'm kidding, obviously. She was just very concerned about the health of the players since she cheers for them. She scolded me a little and told me I should never do that again. But let's go back to Atlant's coaching staff. Here's one name that always made the headlines. Former Team Russia goaltender, legendary Maxim Sokolov is the one who works with Atlant's goalies now. St. Petersburg didn't have any available jobs for me in the KHL, says Sokolov. I got two offers and signed with Atlant. Why with them? I was interested in working with Atlant's goalies. We've got some really talented guys here. Besides, Alexey Kudashov made it clear he wanted to have me on board. And now I'm here. Atlant's starring goalie Stanislav Galimov has made a great progress since Sokolov joined the club. He's not just a young star anymore. He already was called to a few friendly games for Team Russia. Something Sokolov can certainly be proud of. He's a smart kid, says Sokolov. He knows what to do to get better. Besides, Yari Karola, who worked here before, gave him a lot. He has a great work ethic, which is very important for goaltenders. He wants to get better and he works hard. He's moving up the ladder step by step. He'll get to the top one day. I don't know exactly where his limit is, but he deserves to play for Team Russia for sure. Mentality means a lot to goalies, and that's why Sokolov tries to cheer his guys up even after they had a bad night. One other goaltender he worked with this season is Sergei Borisov. Right after the game I say just a few things to cheer them up, says Sokolov. I may point out a thing or two, but there's no in-depth analysis. That's something I say for the next day. I show them a video I made myself and I explain why I think this or that happened. There was never a time where they disagree with my point of view. And it ain't easy to argue with another coach either. Atlant's conditioning coach is a sweep by the name of Lars Alkvist. He's also the one who works with the injured players. He helps them to get in shape as soon as possible, yet another hard-working man. I see everything that happens in the gym, absolutely everything, he says. Sure, I can get mad at some players sometimes, 
but I'd rather talk to the person in private and tell him what I feel like and what I don't like. And I'm never gonna lie to the head coach. When he comes to me and asks how this or that guy works in the gym, I always tell the truth. If somebody is being lazy, I let the coach know about it. No exceptions. That's my job. He always gets what he wants, says Kudashov. Some coaches yell at their players to make them work harder, but he has a different approach. It doesn't matter to me as long as he gets the job done. He's a very positive person. The players love him. They love working with him. You can see it from their eyes when they go into the gym. It's a hard work, but they're happy to do it. Another coach that Kudashov added to the staff is Alexander Savchenkov. He's the one who works with Atlas forwards. That's probably the most creative job in the club. If it wasn't for him, we might have never seen a power duo of Evgeny Artukhin and Alex Kadekin. Artukhin is an experienced forward, while Kadekin was a rookie this season. Artukhin has a lot of great skills as Kadekin. For instance, he makes it easier for all of us to get through the neutral zone. You just give him the puck and skate right through it through the blue line. It's fun playing with him. He makes things a lot less complicated. I play on the line with Alex Kadekin and another kid, Sergei Shmilov, who's like two times smaller than us, says Artukin with a smile. We have a good chemistry. I like playing with these guys. They had a good rookie season. If they keep playing like that, there's a bright future ahead of them. Playing with Artukin, Kadekin has proved to be a prolific goal scorer. He scored 23 points in 54 games, which is not bad for a rookie season. To be honest, I've set a goal a little lower for myself before the season, says Kadekin. But you know what they say, appetite comes with eating. I expected much less from this season than I've actually achieved. Now I've raised the bar even higher for myself. Hopefully, same thing is gonna happen. As for Artukin, he has a bit of a penalty problem. It's a common belief that he's a victim of his own size. Artukin led the KHL in penalty minutes for the last two seasons. He averages almost four and a half penalty minutes per game. I don't know what it is, but the rest have been hard on me since game one of the season, says Artuki. This season it looked like I was called for every hit that I've made. I try to play calm and not dirty. I try not to provoke the refs because sometimes I feel like I get called for every contact that I make. He's a big guy, explains Kudashov, and that's why every hit he delivers is pretty tough to absorb for his opponents. The refs see that and they react. Every now and then we watch a replay and see that there was nothing dirty about the play. He just wins a lot of battles because of his big frame. Atlan has a good group of players, but a young coaching staff. This season they didn't make the players for the first time. Some changes have already been made. For instance, Alexei Petrov and Stanislav Galimov are no longer with the club. Atlant is going to have a new captain, but this is probably just the beginning of a series of changes for them.